A reading from Romans chapter 3, verses 23 through 28. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus, whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation in his blood through faith. This was to demonstrate his righteousness, because in the forbearance of God he passed over sins previously committed. For the demonstration, I say, of his righteousness at the present time, so that he would be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? Of works? No, but by a law of faith. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. We are all humans. None without fault, none perfect, none without guilt, and none without doubts. No human being is perfect. This seems like a simple fact of life. It's a phrase of encouragement we tell our friends when they make a mistake, or a lesson we teach our children when they're learning a new skill. It's even a forgiving shift of mindset when those we look up to do something perhaps less than admirable. In every aspect of life on this earth, we bear witness to imperfection, and more often than not, we meet it with grace. To me, grace looks like a breath of fresh air and a weight lifted off of one's shoulders. It's a hug from a friend, even if you forgot to bring them something because you were having a hard day. It's an open conversation with your parents about a poor grade or a bad decision you made. Grace is all around us. Grace comes and goes from person to person. It's almost what makes the world go round. The spirit of grace and forgiveness is a direct reflection of the spirit of Jesus and his compassion, which is why we are so willing to be graceful toward others, our loved ones, even complete strangers. But in all of this, there is still a missing piece. When was the last time you were graceful toward yourself? Think about it. For real when you failed that test, when you got into an argument with your friend and said something you shouldn't have, or when you disappointed your loved ones and you feel like there's no way out. What were the words you told yourself? What was on loop in your head, getting you through that doubt, making you feel your own worth or functionality or productivity? Were they kind? Were they words of grace? As folks of faith, we are encouraged above all to love our neighbors and forgive as much as we can. For many of us, faith is love and by proxy, love is grace. We give love and grace to others because we want them to know that their imperfections are not reflective of their worth. It's okay to mess up. After all, they were probably just trying their best. Personally, I'm quickly to tell my friends that it's okay and you did everything you could. You're fine, it happens. You're still amazing and I'm here for you and you deserve rest. I am still proud of you too. Now, that sounds like a typical close friendship. Support, kindness, grace. But take a second and flip all of the you's into I statements. I did everything I could. I'm doing fine. I'm still amazing. I deserve rest and I am still proud of myself. Even in saying those words, it feels odd. For some reason, as people, we don't want to support ourselves the same way we support those around us. We don't want to love ourselves, and there is so much difficulty in just being okay with who you are and what you do. In this world, it feels as though everything we desire must be in some way earned. We must earn our living, and sometimes, though we won't admit it, it feels like we must earn grace. Would you ever make a stranger prove yourself to earn your grace? Did your friends and family ever have to face a test to earn your grace? They didn't, so we don't either. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus tells us the greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. We are worthy of the love we give to others. To love your neighbor means to love yourself with grace and forgiveness and kindness. 
In Romans, we're reminded that the grace of God and forgiveness of Christ are not earned by anything we as humans could ever do. We are redeemed by faith and through grace. Faith is not measured by our own works or efforts, and we cannot come to faith alone. It is the presence of the Holy Spirit that brings us to faith, and by the grace of God, we are redeemed through Christ. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, and we are imperfect, but God loves us anyway. So in all of this, remember these words. I deserve grace too. My loved ones have granted me grace. God has granted me grace. To love my neighbor as myself, I must grant myself that grace too. In this great, big, beautiful world, we are bonded by few things. So, let one of them be grace toward all people, and that includes you too.